Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. What's going on YouTube? This is Big Mike. Welcome to Big Mike's Movie Reviews. Yes, I know I have a little bit of a cold. Lord only knows where it came from, but we're going to get through it. So today is officially Valentine's Day. It is February 14th, 2024. And last night I went to go see a film that was supposed to open today, but it opened up just a few days earlier called Lisa Frankenstein. This film is directed by Zelda Williams, who is very famously the daughter of the late, great Robin Williams. This film was written by Academy Award winner Diablo Cody, who also wrote films such as Jennifer's Body and, of course, the film that won her the Oscar, Juno, from 2007. This film tells the story of a young woman named Lisa Swallows, played by Catherine Newton, who moves into this new town because of a certain family situation that's happened and she's got this wicked stepmother who does not get along with her. She's played by Carla Gugino and she's kind of a social outcast until one day while doing one of her favorite hobbies, which is charcoal rubbing, this weird storm happens and it awakens a corpse and this corpse that gets woken up, she decides she wants to befriend this corpse in more ways than one. And through their awkward relationship, to say the least, she uses a faulty tanning bed to fashion body parts onto this guy's body. And the more she does this, the more he becomes more like a human and he changes appearance while also trying to cover up the fact that people have to die in order for these body parts to be obtained. It's about the best way I can put it without completely ruining this movie. I'm going to tell you guys right here and now. I didn't have any desire to see this movie. When I saw the trailer, I said this looks like some stupid little sex comedy. And being that it's Diablo Cody, it's going to have a lot of that witty hipster type dialogue and stuff like that. Because I'm going to be honest, and I know you guys can take my gay card. I did not like Jennifer's body. Still don't. I know that it's gotten a cult following in the years that have since gone by. It just... Much like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, it never grabbed me, I'm sorry to say. But I will say this. Never judge a book by its cover. Because what I did get from Lisa Frankenstein were some pretty solid laughs and actually a solid amount of heart, if you can believe that. One of the film's weaknesses is its tendency to be very dry at times. When it got to some parts that were admittedly rather shocking or even over the top, it was all systems go. But those in-between moments, they really lag. I can sum this up like this. This movie is like a log flume. When you're meandering through the canal, the sights are pretty basic. You know what you're looking at. Nothing much, nothing that exciting. Once you start to go up the incline, you get a little bit excited because you know what's coming next. And then once you get the drop, it's the most exciting part. And then you're back to meandering until you do yet another drop or pull into the station. That's exactly how this film is, if you ask me. I will say this much as well. This is right up there with Drag Me to Hell as being one of the most intense PG-13s I have ever seen. I mean, the, the film's PG-13 rating, by the way, says it's PG-13-4 from the best of my memory. Some strong language some graphic violence, sexual assault, sexual situations, and uh, teen drinking, I believe it was. And it's like, when you have all these various things that are talking about sex and violence, you might as well just give it an R rating. And I will say, it trims around stuff just barely. I mean, it's, it's like right on the cliff of an R rating this movie was, and I feel like it would have benefited from the R rating, you know, because what is shown, whether it's someone's body part or it's something sexual in nature, it's a little strong. 
And there's one moment in particular, I'm not going to say what it is that happens in the film. It's a probably the most uh, shocking moment in the film. It's set to the song On the Wings of Love, and it involves an axe. And that's all I'm going to say. And what happens, what body part gets taken in this moment, it's really surprising. It's done cleverly because what's shown is shown in the shadows and what transpires is cleverly hidden. Kind of like with Jaws, you know, you get to see glimpses of the shark, but you mostly use your mind to fill in the terror yourself. This film does similar things and it does work even with its PG-13 constraints. But I do think because of the shock value and the shocking situations of what's transpiring, I think an R rating would have done this film a little bit more of a benefit, especially when you see things like in the trailer, which of course is linked down below, where you see the creature played by Cole Sprouse, yes, the little boy who grew up from Big Daddy, carry someone and drop them, who's alive by the way, into a grave. I mean, it's the movie, it screams R rating from the trailer right down to the shocked look on Catherine Newton's face when blood splatters across her, her mouth and stuff. I was like, okay, this is going to be rated R. And it's like, no, it's PG-13. And I'm like, wait, what, really? But even with these little subtleties, with you having to fill in the stuff with your mind, it still does work, ultimately. And Catherine Newton, God bless her, I mean, she's really been on an uptick lately. I know that uh, she got her start with horror. She was one of the stars that really benefited from the Paranormal Activity films because she was in Paranormal Activity Part 4. And she was also in Freaky not too long ago as well. So she's definitely got an appetite and taste for horror. She does what she does pretty well. And Cole Sprouse, as the creature, he gives a pretty solid performance considering he has to basically do everything physically and not verbally. And Carla Gugino, who plays the stepmom in the film, you will want to just knock her upside her head. She is a evil bitch on wheels. You'll see what I mean when you see the film. And the film also has that signature Diablo Cody look and feel to it in a lot of ways. For example, in the film Juno, it has an animated title sequence. So does Lisa Frankenstein. In Juno, we get to see a brief clip of a horror movie like Master Magician or something like that. I forgot what it's called with the, the guy turning the thing and smashing it into his stomach. When, uh, you know, Juno, Juno uh, is watching that scene with uh, Jason Bateman in that film. We have in this film, Lisa, watching a clip from Day of the Dead. The famous moment where uh, all the hands and stuff reach out at people. And, again, we have all the clever quips in that film, Juno, as well as this film with pop culture references. And, finally, awkward telephones, of all things. Uh, Elliot Page had a hamburger phone in Juno. In this film, we since it's set in 1989, we have that big plastic uh, colored phone, if you will. So there's definitely some liberties shared between the films. And on the whole note of the film being set in 1989, they did it perfectly. The song that they use in the film that opens up is The Promise by When in Rome, which I really love. I love that song. Maybe I should react to the video. I've never seen it. But um, yeah, capturing that look was perfect, right down to the hairstyles and even that big Debbie Gibson hat that Lisa wears. The costumes in the film are absolutely spectacular, and the fact that if you go into the movie with the right expectations looking for a silly sex comedy with a little touch of horror, I think you'll do yourself just fine. I know that the film does have a low rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and it only has like a 6.2 on IMDb, but you know what? Today, for this Valentine's Day, this is a very solid date movie because the couple that was sitting behind me, they were obviously on a date or they were married. They were cracking up. Like I said, when it gets good, it gets good. The film just kind of ends rather abruptly. We have a couple fades to black here and there. It kind of feels like they tested a bunch of different endings and they just settled on one. But for someone who is the daughter of Robin Williams and for someone as witty as Diablo Cody... The whole package all together served up a slightly above average feature. And I do think Lisa Frankenstein, despite some of its shortcomings, it still does deliver in the end. So I'm now going to assign my grade. I'm going to go ahead and give Lisa Frankenstein a B minus. It gets the minus because at times it's, even though it's a brisk 101 minutes, it kind of 
drags a little bit here and there and it gets really dry in some parts but when it gets going it really gets moving and it's really good and the performances are solid enough with one of the standouts in the film I forgot to mention being the stepsister that Catherine Newton has she's pretty funny but parents be mindful despite the fact that the film is PG-13 there is a very large amount of sexual stuff including sexual situations such as someone being forced to grab somebody's crotch or someone having the covers pulled off of them and they have their hand in their pants. So just be aware, the sexual stuff is really, really strong. Like I said, right up there with Drag Me to Hell is one of the most intense PG-13s for its shock value. So just be mindful of that. Well, all right, you guys, thank you so much for watching my review today of Lisa Frankenstein. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more reviews like this one. And now, if you'll excuse me, I must be getting ready because today I'm going to go see a movie I have been dying to see since I saw the trailer in summer 2023, and that is Bob Marley's One Love. I will be doing my review directly after I get done watching this film outside of the theater in Orange, California. I can't wait to see this. I hope it's worth it. You guys take care. Have a great Valentine's Day. Don't eat too many chocolate and clean up your rose petals, please. And as always, I'll see you at the movies. Bye, you guys.